Regulation C has been an incredibly diverse format. While a lot of common archetypes from series 1 and 2 such as Trick Room, Tailwind, Sun, etc. have remained as prevalent as ever, this weekend showed us two new Pokemon taking the crown at Portland and St. Paulo Regionals respectively that have never obtained a championship this generation, being Jumpluff and Orthworm. Today, I want to discuss these two Pokemon and what they currently have to offer in this format, as well as why they're viable and if I believe we'll see more examples of these going forward this generation. If you guys want to see some more content like this, of course, make sure you like and subscribe and let me know down below if you're team Jumpluff or team Orthworm in the comments. Starting off with Portland Regionals, we have Joseph Ugarte, who also goes by Joe UX9 on YouTube and Twitter, winning his first regional of Scarlet and Violet. Joe has been a several regionals finalist this generation, however despite missing the championship at Charlotte and Fort Wayne, this is Joe's first regional win of 2023. Joe's team consists of King Gambit, Torkoal, Fluttermane, Great Tusk, Jampao, and Jumpluff. While we don't have specific EVs on these Pokemon, we do at least have a lot of open sheet data, as well as being able to go off of just general assumptions that these Pokemon typically invest with. So while I did take some liberties while trying to assume what this team could offer, we do have enough to go off of to make some general predictions. Let's start with King Gambit, which has been a favorite of Joe's teams all generation. This is an Assault Vest King Gambit with Terra Fire that also has the moves Iron Head, Kowtow Cleave, Sucker Punch, and Terra Blast. Now we can probably assume that at the very least it was a bulky offensive King Gambit, and while we don't know the exact investment here, it probably was meant to be a good Trick Room counter. Terra Fire offers a lot for King Gambit here, with not only the ability to take advantage of Sun Boosted Terra Fire or Terra Blast, but it also helps King Gambit avoid burns from common Pokemon like Arcanine that would generally go for a Will O Wisp in this sort of matchup. This also means that King Gambit is able to handle common Trick Room options, and with the Assault Vest, this goes from having an awful matchup against opposing Torkoals to be one of the greatest checks you could provide on the team to this. You also shed your 4 times weakness to Fighting here, which is very helpful to Pokemon like Champau with Sacred Sword, Loki Dragonite, and even Iron Hands. You still need to be wary of Great Tusk, however, with moves like Earthquake and Headlong Rush, but you can certainly manage this with your other support Pokemon on this team. Joe's team being built around Jumpluff means you could probably find a good support through this Pokemon, however, you definitely do want to make sure that you're running some sort of Sun on this team, as this does enable Jumpluff to be one of the fastest support options thanks to Chlorophyll. We've seen Jumpluff have some success in Series 2 without Torkoal, but I feel like it's definitely a missed opportunity if you don't partner this with Sun, and Joe's team seems to have actually thrown on a perfect Sunsetter in the form of Torkoal. Joe's entire Sun aspect here though seems to be very different from a lot of other Sun teams, where both Jumpluff and Torkoal are actually the support pieces here, with an eject pack defensive Torkoal. This is the Terra Flying with Overheat, Helping Hand, Fisher, and Protect. Typically, Torkoal in the past has relied on Yawn over Fisher. However, in the metagame where this has become an Oko or B Oko scenario thanks to Tinglu's presence, I can not only understand why Joe went for the Fisher on Torkoal, but also why he opted for Terra Flying. Torkoal now goes from a Pokemon that can never handle Tinglu to a Pokemon that Tinglu will rarely be able to handle. For anyone who doesn't know, Tinglu typically never actually runs a rock type attack and instead opts for Stomping Tantrum, Fissure, Ruination, and Heavy Slam, which allows Torkoal to actually be able to defensively check this Pokemon pretty well. This also enables partner Pokemon such slots such as Fluttermane, Champau, King Gambit, and especially Great Tusk to do some more damage. Having the immunity to Great Tusk's Earthquake also gives us another ground type immunity here, and especially with the Terra Flying, this can go for Helping Hand and boost Great Tusk's damage output immensely. We also have Overheat here, which can activate a Jet Pack pretty easily, which allows Torkoal to bring in another threatening Pokemon such as Great Tusk or Fluttermane and take advantage of Joe's Sun next to Jumpluff. As long as Joe's careful to not accidentally activate this against common Intimidate Pokemon like Arcanine and Gyarados, this allows a very strong partner slot thanks to the Torkoal's Jet Pack here. This generation gave us one of the most threatening offensive Pokemon in the history of the metagame with the Varian Ghost type Pokemon Fluttermane. Fluttermane is essentially one of, if not the most versatile offensive threats in all of competitive, and despite the fact this typically runs three of the same four moves in Dazzling Gleam, Moonblast, and Shadow Ball, it still is able to offensively invest so intricately in any given team that you're able to really be fairly creative and prep with this. Joe's team uses a Choice Specs Terra Fairy variant with Dazzling Gleam, Shadow Ball, Moonblast, and Thunderbolt. While we're unsure of the specific investments, we know that Joe used a special attack boosting Fluttermane, which in tandem with the Sun Core leads to Joe having one of the strongest special breakers in the format. Fluttermane here provides an incredible special sweeper that when paired with Tailwind Jumpluff can outpace pretty much everything while still landing KOs on every opposing Pokemon thanks to Torkoal Sun. You usually only need the stabs for a fair majority of the metagame, so it seems that Joe opted for a Thunderbolt as the fourth mood slot here, which is able to easily handle Gyarados, which has been a huge rising threat recently. 
This also ensures that Pokemon like Great Tusk and Chien Pao will not have to worry about Gyarados, which is very important for the later portions of Joe's team. One of the best ground types this generation has by far been Great Tusk. Great Tusk provides most offensive teams with a really strong physical breaker, and especially since late Series 2, we've actually seen an uptick in Choice Scarf movesets becoming prevalent, which seems to be the route that Joe took with his team. It seems that Joe went with the Choice Scarf variant of Great Tusk with Terra Fire, using the moves Headlong Rush, Close Combat, Earthquake, and Rock Slide. Similar to Fluttermane on Tailwind teams, you appreciate hitting both Pokemon for as much damage as possible at the same time, and it seems that Great Tusk on this team has both Rock Slide and Earthquake to do so, which accommodate for a majority of matchups, while having Headlong Rush and Close Combat as strong single target options that Great Tusk can take advantage of in exchange for one stat in each of its defenses, both physically and specially. I'm unsure if Joe specifically invested on this to be a Jolly or Adamant set, though we know at the very least this is an attack boost in Great Tusk, which means that Joe had to have some attack in his moveset. Now with Tailwind though this doesn't really matter because with Tailwind and the Choice Scarf you can outpace a majority of other booster energy Pokemon such as Fluttermane and even Iron Bundle which makes you into an incredible offensive threat. Most teams feature a solid Ruin Pokemon in this format whether it's Chiyu, Tinglu, or Chien Pao. Occasionally Wochan but it's usually not that common anymore and in Joe's case it seems like he opted for Chien Pao. Chien Pao and Sun is actually a fairly strong partner as this enables Great Tusk to act even more threatening as a breaker while still applying checks to common grass and flying types that would otherwise threaten the Earthquake spam. It feels weird to mention grass type Pokemon being a really good check to Sun, but the Paradox Pokemon have truly flipped everything upside down this generation. Chien Pao though is probably both a support and an offensive breaker on this team, using the Terra Flying set with Ice Spinner, Sucker Punch, Taunt, and Protect. Chien Pao not only offers an increase in damage put out by Great Tusk and King Gambit, but it also allows you to check common Pokemon that would otherwise threaten these, such as Great Tusk for King Gambit, or Terra, Grass, and Flying Pokemon for Great Tusk. With Taunt, this allows Pokemon such as Mousehold and Amoongus to be completely shut down, which allows Joe to have a more streamlined endgame on his part. While Joe's team doesn't really fear options like Speed Control through Trigger and Tailwind, at the same time though, having Taunt definitely does help with this. You also have Ice Spinner and Sucker Punch, which are strong primary stabs here that also actually support each other pretty well. Despite the decrease in Psychic Terrain, Ice Spinner is a great way to remove this, that way then you can guarantee land Sucker Punches at any point point in the time. Using the Focus Ash here is especially brilliant because it allows Chien Pao to essentially never be one shot by any given Pokemon, and forcing your opponent to either dual target Chien Pao or to take two turns just to kill you is immensely useful when partnered next to Pokemon like Great Tusk and Fluttermane. Terra Flying here is probably meant to give another ground immunity to Great Tusk, so then it has more of an Earthquake Sly here. Partnered with Pokemon such as Terra Flying, Torkoal, and Jump Bluff, I can't imagine this wasn't just another means of Joe having a damage booster here while spamming Earthquake for very low drawback. Finally, we have the Pokemon of the Hour, Jumpluff. Jumpluff is definitely an interesting meta pick, but it offers a shocking amount of utility in this metagame. With access to moves like Helping Hand, Tailwind, Encore, Sleep Powder, Leech Seed, Rage Powder, and so many other valuable support moves, it's easy to see why this has proven to be a genuine threat in today's metagame. With Sun also being a popular pick in regionals, we've seen Jumpluff have a lot of potential to be used, despite never actually being being featured due to the use of Lilligant instead here. Jumpluff having a 110 base speed though does allow you to not only get a strong ground immunity for a Great Tusk, but it also gives you a strong immunity to moves such as Spore and other powder moves that you would see commonly random Pokemon like Amoongus. So it's no surprise to see why Jumpluff is actually very viable in this current format. I think this is the general tournament player base showing that they really want to see Whimsicott back, to be completely honest, which offers similar support moves that Jumpluff would, while also having the Prankster ability to pop them off more reliably instead of Chlorophyll. On Joe's current team, he used a moveset of Terra Water with Leaf Storm, Sleep Powder, Encore, and Tailwind. This Jumpluff would provide a great method of enabling Pokemon like Flutterman and Great Tusk to be truly amazing win cons in the sun, and especially with the special attack and attack boosting on these Pokemon respectively, these two will be pretty much unmatched in any given matchup. With the Covert Cloak, this allows Joe to ensure that he can get off attacks like Tailwind and Sleep Powder immediately without having to worry about fake out users such as Iron Hands. This also enables Joe to be able to avoid the speed drop from Icy Wind, which especially after a Terra Water is actually very important because Jumpluff will typically now be the fastest Pokemon in the field at all times. This allows you to make sure that you're never really getting impeded unless your opponent has a good Taunt user, which is a lot less mandatory than it was in previous formats such as Series 1 and Series 2. While we've seen other fast modes like Talonflame taking the rise with Tailwind, I do think this team in particular actually benefits a lot more from Jumpluff due to the Sun aspect on this team, as well as the fact that it allows you to only have to run one really good support Pokemon, and Torgal is kind of a secondary support thanks to just the Sun. With the metagame focusing on teams like Palance right now, partners like 
Taunt Chin Pao, Terra Flying Torkoal, and Jumpluff on this team especially, allow for a better way to break through what otherwise would be a very common core, as none of these Pokemon really fear the majority of those archetypes. Especially when you factor that most of these teams also include a Ting Lu, and all three of these Pokemon are incredible around it. So how do I think that Jumpluff will end up featuring itself in the majority of Series 3 going forward? I actually think this tournament will be where a lot of the player base attributes Jumpluff to being considered viable for, but I think Jumpluff has honestly always been viable in this format. Sun has been a huge contender in Pokemon since Series 2, and I don't think that we'll see Jumpluff winning any more regionals, but I do think that we'll see a lot more top cut usage. Despite the fact that Lilligant has been a major player, I'm kind of shocked it's taken this long to actually see a Jumpluff do really well in competitive, but I think that going forward, teams will be a lot more willing to consider it. Lilligant and Jumpluff definitely do offer some differences though, with Lilligant having support after you to enable Torkoal to be the more threatening offensive mon. I do think a Jumpluff though is able to enable a majority of other Pokemon on the team besides Torkoal to be threatening, thanks to moves like Tail wind that otherwise you wouldn't really be able to actually enable here. Not only this, you're able to also have a significantly faster support piece as Lilligant reaches a measly base 90 speed, which in the sun is barely able to outpace Fluttermane. Meanwhile, with the jump off on the other hand, you're able actually to outpace a majority of threats even with Tailwind up, thanks to your 110 base speed. While I don't think that every team necessarily needs to run jump off on Sun, I definitely do think it's not really cut and dry, and both Pokemon can definitely benefit any given Sun team, whether you're running Lilligan or jump off on the team. Moving on to our Sao Paulo regionals, we had another new threat pop up being Orthworm. I'm going to spend a lot less time on this team because of the fact that one, I want to save Kurt a little bit of editing, but two, also the fact that we have a lot of very limited information on this team. We have at least the guaranteed six Pokemon that came being Orthworm, Dragonite, Tinglu, Fluttermane, Gyarados, and Xianpao, which fans of the channel might actually recognize and raise an eyebrow when hearing. But we actually did cover this team in a very recent video on the channel, which I'm going to link in the top corner. I think that's right over here, which is rumored to be the team that Joaquin ran with a pretty similar build to what we did here. The original team was built by David Kotesh, and while I'm unsure exactly what these investments do, it's a very terrifying team nonetheless. I featured this team on the channel with one change though, which I changed the Fluttermane for a booster energy spread instead of the Choice Specs one due to the fact that I wasn't 100% sure what this one was meant for. However, at the very least, the rest of this team remains the same. Because of this change, the Fluttermane that you guys might recognize ends up actually having a choice specs here instead of booster energy with shadow ball being replaced by hex and protect being replaced by icy wind here which i think actually offers a lot of good support again though this is all speculation because while we know exactly what david ran we don't actually know what jo joaquin ended up bringing to the regional and even if you go through the stream for sao paulo regionals you can get pretty much no information because you've only actually seen this team on stream for a single match. We can, however, still speculate a lot of what Orthorm will end up doing going forward and why it became viable to begin with. Orthorm probably rose in popularity in this format due to the rise in ground types, with Garchomp and Tinglu especially rising the usage, while Great Tusk was still carrying its Series 2 popularity. With Earth Eater, Orthorm develops an immunity to any ground type attacks and gains back 25% of its health against these. And with Earthquake being one of the most popular ground type moves on Pokemon that it is using for both a stab and a non-stab, Orthrone can pretty easily not only self-proc this HP boost, but also take advantage of opponents. With Pokemon like Tinglu, Dragonite, and even Gyarados on this team potentially running a ground type attack, you could definitely have a really free opportunity to just consistently gain back HP every single turn with Orthworm. Meanwhile, Orthworm also benefits a lot from using the Shed Tail move, which is able to bring in Pokemon like Dragonite, Fluttermane, and Xianpao for massive damage. The core of Orthworm, Choice Band Tinglu, and even Dragonite's Dragonite also allows for a quite terrifying partnership, as Tinglu was able to go for a pretty free Choice Band at Earthquakes here that both partners would be completely immune to. Orthworm also gives Terraflying Dragonite a very easy way to set up here thanks to Shed Tail, and also Dragonite's Dragonite thanks to this is able to set up for Dragonances and go for Terraflying Terra Blast to clear Pokemon such as Amoongus and Gyarados that would otherwise be fairly annoying for the Tinglu and Orthworm core. With partners such as Gyarados and Champau, you also have some really good support here, and on this particular team, I definitely think that Champau is especially a support mon. And meanwhile, you have Fluttermane as your key special breaker here because it's not only just one of the best special Pokemon in the entire format, but it also helps break through a lot of common Pokemon that would otherwise maybe threaten Orthworm here. I believe Orthworm will probably, however, be the weaker of these two going forward in competitive Pokemon. I think Orthworm mostly stemmed for its true viability reaching up in the format due to the fear of Fisher, and it still definitely does provide a strong showing in this format, despite the fact that Fisher has gone down a little bit, but I do think that we'll definitely see a decrease in usage going forward. 
I can't imagine that Orkhorn will never top cut again, as I do think it's actually a pretty strong Pokemon, but I do think its success is reliant on other Pokemon taking advantage of the Shed Tail, such as Dragonite, and I think that it's a lot more predictable in how it would be ran versus something like a Jumpluff, which can be thrown on any given Sun Team, which at the very least is Archetype specific there. Orthworm does have a nice niche here though, which allows you to not only get an Ice Resistance, but also get an immunity to Ground, which is actually very unheard of in competitive Pokemon. And especially with Iron Bundle, Chimpao, and even Abomasnow currently being extremely viable Pokemon, with the first two being meta defining, I do think Orthworm will at least be a niche pick going forward. However, unlike Jumpluff, I do think at the very least though that due to the fact that Sun has only been rising in usage, I think that Orthworm will actually be pretty stagnant if not go down a little bit, despite being one of my favorite new Pokemon to use this generation. Hopefully you guys were able to learn something new from this video, and if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content going forward. Also, make sure you guys check out Kurt, his links will be down below in the description, as Kurt was the one who actually edited this video for me. Thank you very much, Kurt. And if you're interested in some phenomenal draft league content, as well as a content creator who knows both the singles and doubles metagame, fairly well, Kurt is going to easily be your guys' choice going forward for content. I also want to give a massive shout out to our channel members being Josh K Ultra Player, Mia, Zeke Zero, Bebat, Onnit the Purr, Timo Mueller, Bonzi, Bambambi, Rail Plays, Obo, and Johannes B. Your guys' support on the channel is greatly appreciated. If you guys want to become channel members, make sure you guys hit the button down below. And for a couple dollars extra a month, you not only get some bonus content, but the extra money also does help a lot while I'm trying to experiment with content. And it helps, of course, pay Kurt, who is going to be editing a lot of, if not all of our content going forward. I'll see you guys on Friday, though, with our normal type tier list. And until then, peace out, guys.